We decided to go join the Marines the next day. Uh, I was the captain of the team and another young man named William Rubalcaba uh, was a quarterback. Lo and behold, they accepted him, they rejected me. Well, I came back with my tail between my legs because they didn't take me. My friend, they took him. I was at a theater on uh, 10th and Central, which was predominantly a black area. And there was a theater there that uh, uh, everybody in the neighborhood used to go to, mostly blacks and Mexicanos. I was there one night that was uh, elaborated upon and documented in the newspapers all over Los Angeles. It was the uh, Navy men and policemen came into the area and the policemen allowed uh, the sailors or marines or whatever they were to beat on, on the fellows that were standing outside of the theater or at the corner in their zoot suits. And the police, the law enforcement, made sure that all those military guys got out of the neighborhood safely. They escorted them. You saw that happen? I, I was right there, yeah. I was in the, in the inside of the theater sitting when you hear all the rumble outside. I come running out. It was uh, fear of the unknown, rubbing elbows with different kind of people. Uh, well, of course, uh, a lot of whites, uh, and Mexicans from different places. Uh, I, I, I didn't come in contact with blacks in the army. That has been one of my uh, things that I have always thought of in terms of racism, is that I was accustomed to blacks. Uh, I had some very close black friends. Uh, I go into the army, you know, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans and, and, and uh, whites. Uh, are trained together, but the black, the blacks were like a separate army. They trained separately. They did not live in our, in our uh, barracks. You sleep in that bed, you make it. You wear them clothes, you wash them. You walk on that floor, you clean it. There's no service here. You understand that? They had their own PX. Matter of fact, when I was at Fort Lewis, I used to go to the black PX because I was used to the black music in my neighborhood. In the old days, they used to have jukeboxes and all kinds of good black music. So I would go to the Black PX. Well, one instance to start, uh, we had some Puerto Rican guys in the, in the military there in our in our uh, in our bivouac in Manila in that hotel, and there were occasions of bad talking the Puerto Ricans, not by the Mexicanos because the Mexicanos used to get along good with them. Several fights uh, broke out on on the cause of uh, some of the guys calling the Puerto Rican niggers uh, or spicks. Uh, or talking to him in a derogatory manner. My observation was that the American soldiers, and by that I, I was an American soldier, by that I mean the, mostly the Anglo-Saxon soldiers, had no respect for the Filipino women. You know, every Filipino woman was like a whore, you know and they disrespected a lot, a lot of women. I never read a communique. We never were gathered to be told, you're all in the army together. You have to learn to live together. Any of you guys who carry chips on your shoulders, keep them to yourself. We, 
that should have been done. Being that I was not a world traveler and I was brought up in the barrio, it opened my eyes to a lot of things with the bigger world into which I entered into later and saw the racism in the military, uh, my neighborhood, and then into the military. And my head got gradually, got into the idea that I needed to do something about that racism, about uh, what occurs uh, to our people in, in in this country, in this state, in this city. And I've been doing that for years now. I, I, I don't say I've done anything or I've had any impact, but uh, that's what I've been doing. <laughs>